Hi everyone, it's Ross again, back with a bit of a cold. Um, so my voice is sounding sexy as hell, I know, I know. Um, so today we're going to make a sci-fi scrap pile. Yay! And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to collect a load of random bits. So stuff from broken clocks, so everyday clocks. The modern ones come with nice plastic gears, loads and loads of little ones. So that's always nice for a bit of a sci fi scrap pile. Like so. Now I have an example of tubey stuff. So this is a straw from a WD 40 can. Other cans of lubricant are available. Um, things like that would make a put a bit of heat on it, maybe bend it a little bit. Could look like a nice pipe uh, and some bigger gears. So, being a mechanic, I have access to busted motors all the time. So I'm gonna smash them open and let's see what's inside. So, once again, a bit from a clock. So, you can use anything you want. So, if you don't have access to a clock that you want to smash up, please ask permission before you do so. Uh, you could always use things around the house. So, this is, or will be, a rolled steel joist. So, I think iron girders, things like that. This is made from star sticks. So, three star sticks stuck together. Use stuff like that. You can make planks from star sticks. So, if you imagine what would be in your scrap pile. So, this is basically what I want to do is make a line of sight blocking piece of terrain that looks pretty good on a sci-fi table, such as Outlands. So, Outlands is obviously our main baby. And I like busted sci fi terrain. I think it looks really cool. So, wire is great for making bits of, you know, it looks like wire. It's made from wire. Shocker, right? Soldering wire is fantastic because this stuff is so soft, it'll go into any position so, so easy. Look, there we go. Fantastic and not a problem. If you want something a bit more rigid, uh, how about paper clips? Everybody has access to paper clips. Now, I have loads of, loads of tiny bits of scrap mesh lying around. So this is from my body shop cabinet at work. If you can see that. The light's a bit weird for once. Um, you know, if you don't have access to that, you can use any mesh from packaging. You know, anything that looks remotely sci-fi. So it is basically whatever you want. You can find pebbles and rocks and things like that. Makes it a bit heavy. Or you can use bits of cork, which look like rock and they are super, super light. So just an excuse to pop open a bottle of wine. Got to drink the lot and then attack the cork and put it on the base. I'm joking, you don't really have to get drunk to make this video. So you can use any bits lying around. And little bits from sprues, stuff from old busted miniatures, things like that are ideal as well. So playing lots of 40k, I have this kind of stuff lying around. So obviously not painted, just broken off of something years ago. Uh, probably a chaos model. So you can see a skull stabbed on a spike and a looks like a towel helmet there. So you can use anything you want in your scrap pile. Literally anything you want. So I was messing around years ago with I had bits of an old Space Marine bike left. So not the full bike. And I thought that looked pretty good on a scrap pile. So I was converting this. I will break it up a bit more, make it look more like a sci-fi chopper. Maybe chuck that in there as well. Little bits of vehicles, vents, exhaust pipes, things like that always look great on a scrap pile. Um, just little bits of terrain like this lying around. You know, that'd be great. Cut it up, cut bits off of it, stick it in the heap. So the basic idea of what I'm going to do is, I have my board, something that will not warp, because some cardboard will warp with PVA glues, things like that. Now I'm going to get a big chunk of polystyrene, stick it in the middle and that will be my base and the polystyrene I'll start stabbing it with bits like this and I'll run some filler over it so you could just cover it with sand um, 
lots of sand and PVA glue, things like that. And that'll be fine, that'll be okay, uh, because polystyrene will chip, it will break. But I want it to look more like sand and rough and ready stuff. So this stuff is relatively cheap. I think it's quite a large tub. Obviously for my body shop cabinet, again, it's about six pounds new. Now it sounds quite expensive, but it goes a long, long way. So I'm just going to smear that over the top of the, the polystyrene. And that looks nice, rough and ready. Looks like sand. And it's really, really hard and unlikely to chip in your normal club environment. So if you've got a bit of polystyrene, even if it's covered in sand and PVA glue, it is likely to chip after a long period of time. I mean, if you're just using it at home, not a problem. But for me personally, I lend it to the club quite often. Things get bashed around, so I want it nice and durable. So everybody's seen PVA glue and sand before, but I thought I will try a bit of this on camera and show you how durable that stuff is. So just keep little bits of sprue over the years. The sprue itself is really good for making um, gantries and stuff like that in a massive sci-fi sci -fi scrap pile. So imagine what you like to see in a scrap pile today. So busted cars, things like that. If you want to make something of this era, it doesn't have to be sci-fi. Same thing again applies. In the past, I've made scrap piles from... Mr. Kipling tin foil or mince pie cases, and I just keep crushing them, crushing them, crushing them, crushing them down into the little little cubes, and they look like crushed cars. So I've done that before in the past and made a scrap scrap yard with that. But this time I'm going to make a line of sight blocking terrain. So I imagine it at the moment probably I don't know four inches high, maybe a bit higher, something that's not going to be readily easy for a model to climb. But it will block line of sight. So that is the sketch that I want. This is what I envision in my head. Um, I've got loads of busted bits of clocks. Found this from a little generator. I thought this would be pretty cool. It's a piston. But I understand not everybody has access to little generators and compressors. Um, but yeah, just anything that moves these days has a bearing or gears, things like that, and that'd be great for this kind of thing. So that's what I imagine, a bit steampunk-esque with gears, but a big pile of rubbish. That's what I want. So, busted miniatures work well. If you've got robotic miniatures, it looks like they've been chucked on the scrap pile. If you want the occasional dead body, so I'm very fond of Killing Tau from 40k, because I flipping hate them. So I'm going to put them in there possibly as well. So it looks like a few bodies being chucked in the scrap heap. But yeah, let your imagination run wild. So I'll come back to the table again after a chunk of polystyrene has been sacrificed to the modelling gods. So me being me, I never chuck any polystyrene away. And I have a piece here that's been stuck together for some reason. I will remember it after I hack it up and then realise I shouldn't have done that. But here we go, here's a chunk of polystyrene, two bits glued together previously, and it's a bit big for the base. So polystyrene will break quite easy, uh, but these tiny little balls, these extruded little balls, will go everywhere and they're very staticky. So you can use a knife, which is totally fine to cut through, or this is one of the eBay purchases I've had for hobbies over the years that I'm really chuffed with. Relatively cheap. This is the probably one of the cheapest hot wire cutters you can get on eBay. And I think even with a battery, this was six pounds. So very, 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 very cheap. You might see me use this before in videos, but this thing is fantastic. Obviously, it's very cheap and it will won't go over this. But I was just going to show you roughly how big I want this kind of styrene piece. Uh, I'm going to say about there, so I'm going to activate the wire cutter and it will just cut through like that, no worries. So as you can see, no balls anywhere, polystyrene balls, people please, 
be a doubt about this. You can see my cheapy little cutter won't go around it because it's too small. I'll just cut into it, make life easier. I'm doing this basically because I don't want the stuff going everywhere. Now I'll try to snap it in half on camera. There you go. Less mess. So, the more money you spend on these things, the better they are, obviously. You can get some extremely wide jewels, um, and obviously it's like more expensive. Like I said, this thing is dirt, dirt cheap. The reason I use it is not to cut blocks like that. It's to make the edges more mountain-like. So I go like this. And it's, it's just really quick, really simple and easy. And no mess. I love hot wire cutters. A lot of my scenery I've done for Outlands, things like that in the past. I've just used that. And the stuff that comes off, you, know, you can see how smooth that is. If you did that with a bread knife, for example, or just a really, really sharp kitchen knife, the bits would go everywhere. It would tear into this. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick these two bits back to back on the board. And once it's dry, I'm going to start attacking the sides to make it a bit more sloped. So it doesn't quite look like that. Don't want my scrap pile just immediately going up. I want it slightly tapered. So I'll come back once it's glued to the base and I can start attacking it with a hot wire cutter. Okay, once PVA glue is dry, I like to leave like a book or some kind of weight on top of the polystyrene so it's a nice tight fit. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to bevel off. And the polystyrene and the hot wire cutter. Now remember you can use a knife, not a problem. You don't have to have a hot wire cutter to do this. It just makes less mess. It's kind of therapeutic in a way. Beveling off a little bit. Doesn't have to be too neat because I'm going to put some of the easy sand filler on. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but probably a pile isn't that that square. So if you want to, it also looks more like a heap. Less square, isn't it? Okay, and with a few remaining bits, I'm going to stick on the top here just so the heap continues just a little bit. All right, back in a sec. Okay, so I've stuck a little bit on the top, all the glue should be dry. Now, using a lighter is a bit dangerous near this stuff because if you go too far with it, it could drip and catch fire. <laughs> But I'm just using the heat near the flame to shrink it back a little bit to make it look a bit more rugged. Now you don't have to do this at all. What did you see, old man? Godzilla! Godzilla! Um, <clears throat> yeah, not, not too much caffeine at all. Uh, just shrink it back just a little bit. Now you don't have to do this. Like I said, you're putting the filler on the top anyway, so you never see it. But I like to make it look a little bit more random. make it look too perfect. Okay, just an optional little extra. Okay, so I'm using um, car filler, uh, only because it used tools that you have. Um, 
but you could use anything you want in the way of fillers. So you could use just wood filler, things like that. Um, and like I said, you, you can definitely use sand and PVA. That's not a problem. I just want this stuff to be pretty much indestructible. So I'll take a good dollop of this. Let mix up a little bit, it's separated over the years. So just to show you, you don't need to spend lots of money on hobby. This is six quid and it will last for a long, long time. So I get a good dollop of this. Put it on something I can mix. A spare bit of board. Right. It's probably a good idea to wear gloves. He says not wearing gloves. And use this stuff in a well ventilated area because it is a bit smelly. Lots and lots of chemicals. And then you use a little bit of the hardener, which is the stuff in the silver packet. Not soy sauce. So, squeeze a little bit onto the tray. So, about that much. I don't want to use too, too much. Go off too quickly. Give this stuff a damn good mix. Now start smearing it on the, the trash pile. Trash pile? God, I went a bit American then. Rubbish pile. Trash. Sorry for those American people watching, I'm not taking the pee. Honestly. Alright. Once you think that's relatively well mixed, and we start spreading it on the heap like so. so. Big dollops of it not being neat. Just chuck it in there. I'll come back after I've made a big mess and show you what I've done so far. And as you start adding more and more of the fur, making your trash pile a bit more natural, a bit more lumpy bumpy, you can start plugging some of your pieces directly into it. So you can see a cog there. I've got a little bit of a sprue that I've just shoved in, a bit of a broken off sprue. Do another one there. There's a bit of writing on that side, so I'm going to swap that over. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Shove another bit in next to it. Um, and just get creative. Get a bit weird, a bit wonderful with this stuff. Start chucking bits in like that. Bits of wire, a little bit of mesh here and there as well. Go crazy, go to town. Solder wire as well was quite nice. Nice and soft, bend in any position you want. Just jam it in there. When it goes off, which shouldn't be very long, you start bending the wire, manipulating it. So I'll come back after I make this thing a little Christmas pudding. So as I'm sticking weird and wonderful bits to this junk pile, I want to make some steel plating with weld lines on it. So I found this ages ago. It's just um, it's just a, a craft gel. So you get these in your local hobby craft or whatever. And this stuff is great. Manipulate it, make it look all lumpy and bumpy. It looks like weld. It's 
great if you got like orc vehicles or something. You want to make it look beaten up. Looks like there's welders and plates together. just spaffed and the back of a hobby knife or something nice clean edge right and when that dries that should look like it's been welded it's already drying should be drying no time at all when it all painted up, different colours, should look like a panel that's been welded and beaten together. So once you've finished having fun and making this thing look beaten, loads of panels on it, random things like there's a drum, you know, um, girders, pipes, bits of metal, go nuts, go wild, um, put as much as you want on, you know it's a scrap pile, it's supposed to look crazy. So once you've finished and you're happy with that, uh, you want to decide on your texture. So I want my texture to be rough, coarse, gravelly bits. So not fine sand for once, a random mix. So I haven't sieved this or graded it just a random mix of sizes, different shapes. I'm going to coat the main part of this. So not the panels or the, the components, everything around it. PVA glue. Uh, once it's gone off, I'm going to coat it again in PVA glue just to seal it in. And then I will come back to you after making a mess. Okay, so once you've covered it in sand, like I said previously, it's always nice to cover it in PVA again and wait until the sand fully goes off. So I've added a load of weird and random bits. Now I'm probably going to use this for Outlands, so I did think, grabbing a random space marine here, uh, it's always good to have a few little steppy bits in Outlands. So remember you can climb anything that's an inch without any penalty, so I'd have to do any climb checks, so I thought it'd be pretty cool to put little bits in the side that I could climb on. Uh, but not all the way around, it look a bit weird when it steps all over this thing. So just, as per usual, random household materials, so bits of cardboard, barbecue skewers, bits of a pen, uh, this stuff, which in the States are called granny grading, I'm not entirely sure what it's called in this country, but use it for cross stitch. Uh, made a little pallet here from stair sticks and matches. Yeah, so there's bits of sprue in there and all sorts. So now what I'll do is I'll use a rattle cam, uh, some cheapy primer from a Poundland or something similar, and a couple of coats to make the cardboard a bit stiffer and make sure everything then can be sprayed. So this stuff here, this granny grading, whatever you want to call it, is a Bit of a pain to paint without any primer, so I'll nuke it with some primer and come back in a sec. Okay, so once everything is sealed with primer, it looks a bit more interesting now. It looks a bit more like a rubbish heap. Is that a good thing that it looks like rubbish? Meh, yeah, maybe. So a random mess of household materials. Hopefully I can start painting that up with an airbrush and make it more look more interesting. So what I want to do is use some airbrush paints, like this nice burnt brown. And I know that I need to make the edge of the base something like the rest of my Outlands terrain. So the very edge of the base, I'll start with this and work my way up to a more of a burnt colour. 
drop some weird wonderful colours in there. Um, some oranges for the rust. Uh, maybe a bit of typhus corrosion because I love that stuff from GW. Make some nice rusted marks and worn marks. And a few add um, bright bits of colour, maybe on the welded panels. Just something to draw the eye. Right, I'll pick my colours and I'll come back with the airbrush. Okay, so the first thing's first, I'm going to lay down some of this burnt brown. Um, initially, I'm not going to make it too, too dark. <coughs> it's not because I'm breathing in fumes, guys, it's because I've had a bit of a cold. Plus this uh, Vallejo airbrush paint range. It's actually quite sweet. I love it. So yeah, just laying down some of this. Color. So I'm not worried about looking too good initially. So I'm gonna throw some weird colours in with this brown, see what it comes out like. Just experiment. Just a little bit. I don't want it too, too thick. Especially near the edges where I'm going to blend it in with my fleshy colour. That so matches the rest. Now, obviously, you can paint this whatever you want. You can go like a Martian kind of colour. Sorry, a Mars kind of colour. A little bit ready. Mmm, almost look like chocolate. No, 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 no. to drop in with the brown. So trying to make sure I've got all the difficult bits anyway with the basic brown. As for always, start with the difficult bits when airbrushing. So a little bit of blue, I think. Get all the purple tinge. There's no real metal with this. Just messing around. Oh, 
probably a bit too blue. It's a bit too blue. Red in there. Hmm, that's quite a vibrant red. I might try some army color red. Do quite like the army color range. Um, real nice guys to chat to. Another stuff. Right, so a bit more red in there. So just getting all the higher areas now. Man, I love the smell of this stuff. It's proper sweet smelling. Oh no, he's getting high again off the paint. No, it's not toxic. That's a bit more of an eye-catching colour. Random, like random. Okay, now I'm going to start adding a bit of that flesh colour to it, just on the edges. to me. I'll hit it with a bit more. This is just on the edges purely because I've got terrain boards that are very very similar in colour. Uh, I like to make them all kind of fit in. This isn't an airbrush paint, so I'm going to have to make my own. Yeah, of course I'm wearing gloves. Not. Really should be because I'll end up wearing half the bloody paint. Okay, let that dry and hit it with same again around the edges. Okay, so mess around with some colours. Obviously rustic colours are always pretty nice. Uh. 
crop to make the, uh, the rust look too uniform. Make it stronger in some places rather than others. vibrant and eye-catching, even if it doesn't look quite natural. It's, uh, it's nice to make it stand out a bit. See, that's the thing, you can make an army painted to a tabletop standard using, like, let's say, Imperial Guard, for example. Everyday kind of khaki colours that you would find in a regular army. Great. But it just looks a bit plain, looks a bit boring, doesn't really stand out. So like my Tyranids, for example, I could have gone some weird and wonderful crazy colours. Ones that may not make sense to me, but if it stands out a bit, it's going to win more paint competitions. So I'm always trying to push myself, because I always go safer colours. And this is the thing about this hobby, always push yourself and experiment. Don't be afraid to ask people's opinions as well. You should be able to get constructive criticism without being nasty. So I'm just making some random rust marks and patches. You do get that over spray the main base colours. You can always just put it down to rust running down the pile. Or you can always tidy it up. So it's starting to come together a bit now. Okay, so it's standing out a little bit now. So I'm trying to imagine where the the metals would be most worn, most weathered, and basically whatever stands out.
So I'm making random blast marks. Some of this. Making it stand out a little bit here and there. Okay. Okay, now I think I'll start doing some of the detailed colours. So by detailed colours, I mean picking up the different colours, something eye-catching on these panels here. Um, some scrape marks on some of the metals. I'm just having a bit of fun. Going a bit random. Just letting the orange settle down a little bit and then popping it in a few places. I just want this piece, even though it's junk, to uh, stand out on the table. Okay, it's looking pretty good right now. Alright, I'll leave that alone and I'll pick some colours from my panels. Okay, so I'm going to make some of these panels a bit bright. Now, don't worry about them being too bright. Because we can always tone it down a little bit with some washes. Okay, so when you put down some base colours on the panels, if they're too clean, put a wash on them. So I've just put a no oil wash, dabbed it a few times, so it doesn't look too uniform. And same over here, and I know that red doesn't cover very well over dark material, so I've only put two thin coats on it and made it look a little bit spodgy. So, probably should have put three on, should make it nice and even, but it looks looks about right, looks a bit worn, looks a bit beaten. So I'm going to do some details on this panel here. So, I want to make it look like those panels are welded together. So I'm going to sketch some... Rough numbers. Make it look like it was part of something else. Making them a bit bigger now. A bit more eye catching. I need a couple coats because white on a dark color doesn't look very good. How do they for that? Get myself a bit of a better point with a brush. A bit more water.
a bit thicker. Tidy up in, in a bit. Just want to get the basic bit like that. Okay. And, and then I'm going to do something a bit fun and recognizable on the red. So, um, what's red and recognizable? Uh, probably. Coca-Cola, but get sued for that. Um, The rough guidelines for a minute. Once again, need a bit better point for the brush. Now you could use a smaller brush. Like I said, I'm just getting the guidelines for a minute. Um, so about halfway there, about there. Colour it in and then paint the little red T out of it as well. Because this is going to be the Texaco symbol. Put a couple of coats of white on because the red will always cover over white better. Remember, I don't want it too perfect because I want it chipped. Okay, that's the first coat. I'll probably put one more on. Trying to get it too, too perfect then. Alright, I'll come back when that dries. Okay, so picking up small bits of detail, like a um, bit of blood and rusty pipe there, a bit of splatter below. Um, just some random bits of detail up in the back of that plate there. And on the front of it, finished off the slightly worn and beaten Tesco symbol. Um, bit of blood for the blood gold there. And as you can imagine, What I'm gonna do with oh, there's a bit there. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna weather it and beat it up a bit and turn it into hazard stripes. So there's something to look at on every part of the base. So I'll finish off the hazard stripes, take a few pictures, and that should be it. Okay, so here's the finished product. And that's 
what you can make with just random household materials. Just a line of sight blocking piece of terrain. But looks quite post apocalyptic and quite sci fi. You can make it as modern as you like with car pieces, vehicle pieces. I made it with generic pieces, so no GW bits are in here. For demoing of Outlands, people would get confused or sued by GW. Thank you for watching, guys.